Okay, welcome back to another in our series of key diagrams for your A-level and IB economics papers. In lessons recently, we've been thinking about consumer and producer surplus and how we can use them in different topics. So I thought I'd walk through with you the key concepts, key diagrams, and also some examples of areas of the course where you might well use these two concepts to score good marks for analysis. So we'll take a look at consumer surplus in the left-hand diagram and producer surplus in the right-hand diagram for a particular market. Now, consumer surplus is the difference between what consumers are willing and able to pay for a product, be it a smartphone or a meal out, for example, and the price they actually do pay. So this is a competitive market and the equilibrium is at point B, where supply and demand are in balance, the price, is, uh, the price charge is P1, we assume everybody gets charged the same price at the moment. The market quantity is Q1. Well, consumer surplus is the area underneath the demand curve and above the price. Because there are some people who are willing to pay more than P1 for that product. Um, and so that's the area A, B, P1. That's consumer surplus, the area below the demand curve and above the price. That point A is quite significant. That uh, point where if the demand curve cuts the y-axis, it suggests there's a maximum willingness and ability to pay. That's the top price that can be charged for, if you like, the first consumer if the product was extremely scarce in the market. So there's your area of consumer surplus and the producer surplus. Well, let's track over to the right-hand diagram. Producer surplus is the difference between what the firm is getting, what the business is receiving per unit. And again, this term, in this example, it's price P1. And the minimum price they would need to sell each of the preceding units. So producer surplus is always the area above the supply curve and below the price in a competitive market. Let's put our labels on again, A, B, P1. So we know that consumer surplus is A, B, P1, but uh, producer surplus is this area here uh, shown by P1, B, C. Oh, very quickly, C again is the minimum supply price. So if the price falls below C in the market at the moment, then producers will not be willing or able to supply, supply any amount to the market. So that's the minimum supply price. But of course, the producer is assumed to be getting price P1 for each of the units up to Q1. So producer surplus at the market equilibrium is the amount shown by the area P1BC. P1BC. Now, in the exam, please label rather than shade. Label your areas, key areas. It's much neater, it's much cleaner, and it gives a really good impression. Shading is not good news in the exam. <laughs> uh, total surplus is area A, B, C. If we add together consumer plus producer surplus, we get, uh, well, you can call it total surplus. You can also sometimes call it community surplus. And the equilibrium at point B gives us allocative efficiency. There's no bigger area there of total consumer and producer surplus. So hopefully this is a good little quick overview, quick revision of how to show the areas of consumer and producer surplus. Now those areas will change if there's a shift in one or both of the demand and the supply curves. So what are some of the key topic areas where you might well bring these concepts in? I keep telling my students, if you're, if you, if you're trying to analyse and evaluate, welfare economics is a fantastic area to include in your analysis. So the best answers do bring in these key concepts of consumer and producer surplus. So here are eight examples. You might, for example, think about the welfare effects of a market becoming more contestable, for example, with new entrants coming into a, into a market. What about the welfare consequences of a monopoly that engages in different types of price discrimination? Or within an oligopoly, what are the consequences for consumer surplus? For example, if the major firms within a market decide to collude on price and keep prices high. What about the consequences of indirect taxes and government subsidies on consumer and producer welfare? And what about the consequences for welfare, consumers in particular, if businesses can successfully uh, exploit internal economies of scale? And crucially, point seven and eight, so link on micro to macro, I think consumer and producer surplus are going to be really key points to think about if you're asked to analyse and evaluate the consequences of trade, trade liberalisation, for example, at a micro level. You might get a synoptic question on that, and definitely the welfare effect of protectionist measures such as import tariffs or import quotas.
Okay, we'll add some more videos on this, but this was a basic look through key revision of consumer and producer surplus. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay happy. See you sometime soon.